Hello, my name is Chris and today I would like to talk to you about using things to distract ourselves when we are quitting smoking. Now, you're a smart person, so you don't need me to turn on my camera and say to you, hey, if you're craving a cigarette, you should go and find something to distract yourself and go and keep busy. You already know this. And you know it because every single piece of advice you've probably ever read or listened to about quitting smoking has said the exact same thing. If you are craving for a cigarette, find something to keep busy and distract yourself. But if you're anything like me, you may have found that this isn't always helpful advice. That you try and distract yourself, but the whole time you're still thinking about a cigarette. Chris, I was really craving, so I went and I cleaned my house, but as I'm running the vacuum and I'm wiping down the surfaces, the whole time I'm just thinking, man, I really want to smoke. Chris, I tried doing a jigsaw puzzle to distract myself from smoking, but time moved so slowly. And when I put the last piece in, I just went back to craving that cigarette. It was awful. What's going on? Why are these distraction techniques not helping us? Why is being, trying to distract ourselves proving ineffective? And what can we do to distract ourselves in a way that is more effective? My answer to that is to not distract ourselves at all, but to fully engage ourselves in something else. I have this idea about why certain things that we do to distract us aren't working. The idea is this. A lot of the things that people tell us to do to distract ourselves from a cigarette craving aren't really distractions at all. They're just alternative actions. What I mean by that is that a lot of the things that were recommended that we should do might keep us physically away from a cigarette but they do nothing to keep us mentally and emotionally away from that attachment and that longing and that urging for a cigarette. In researching this video, I, I was doing, I was looking at some articles and one said, if you are craving a cigarette, here are a list of things that you can do to distract yourself. And it was things like, go and clean your car, go and vacuum the living room, go for a walk. And I kind of thought, unless you really love cleaning your car, like there is nothing more exciting in the whole world than wiping your car down with a sponge, it is not going to be so helpful. Because I don't know about you, but whenever I've cleaned a car, it might keep my hands busy, but my mind can go all over the place because it, it doesn't take much cognitive effort to clean a car can move the sponge along and my mind can still be fixated on a cigarette. I might not be able to physically smoke because I've got a sponge in this hand and this hand is soaking wet anyway so I can't even hold a cigarette with it. So physically it is working to keep me away from smoking. But mentally because it isn't really engaging me in any kind of mental or even emotional level I'm just thinking well, I'm cleaning this car because I'm distracting myself from the craving for a cigarette. The craving for a cigarette. I'm craving for a cigarette. Oh my goodness, I need a cigarette. Ah! Likewise, you know, a, a very popular one is to go for a walk. In fact, I've probably recommended this half a dozen times because I enjoy going out in nature and just walking around. But if the scenery is very uninspiring, or if you just bloody hate walking, and you're going, oh, okay, I'm walking to distract myself from smoking, from smoking. 
smoking. I wish I was smoking. Smoking, oh my goodness, it doesn't work because it, 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 it's like being in a cage, right? And the cigarettes are on a table just there. And we're here in this cage. And because we're doing this physical action, we can't physically reach for the cigarettes, but they're still there and we still know they're there and we're still mentally have this urge to reach out and grab them. It's worth remembering as well the, the, the thing about our minds can't process a negative. So if we are not mentally engaged in something, if we are just keeping ourselves physically busy, then we're going, okay, I'm just, I'm not smoking right now. But the mind doesn't really hear the word not, it just hears smoking and it's obviously it's smoking with cigarettes. So it does nothing to get rid of that mental obsession that comes with the physical craving. I remember years ago when I first had a big problem with alcohol and I went to a 12 step meeting and they gave me this big blue book called The Big Book. And they said, if you're thinking of a drink, sit and read this book. Right now, normally I love reading, but I didn't particularly like this book for whatever reason. And I remember there was one time when I was craving a drink. So I thought I'm going to do a suggestion. And I got the book and I was reading, I was trying to read it. And I remember thinking, even then, this isn't really distracting me from alcohol, because I'm still thinking about alcohol, I'm even bloody reading about alcohol. I'm just, physically I can't pick up a drink because I've got a book in my hands. And that's what it's like with a lot of the, the physical things that they tell us to do to, to avoid a nicotine craving. It's just keeping us physically away from a cigarette. Now, admittedly, if that's the only option available to us, it is better than the alternative, but it is not as good as being physically, mentally, and emotionally fully engaged in something. There's a situation that probably many of us are familiar with. We're in a job that we don't particularly like. It doesn't fulfill us in any way, it doesn't engage us, it doesn't satisfy us in any way, we're just kind of there to pick up a paycheck and go home at the end of the day. And time feels like it's dragging on forever and we're obsessed with looking at the clock and every five minutes feels like an hour and all we want to do is go home. We're thinking about, we're not thinking about the work, we're just thinking about, oh my goodness, I just want to leave. Then, later, we might go and see a movie, we might go and see a sports game, we might go to a concert, we might hang out with friends, we might go paint a picture, we go and do something, and as we're doing this thing, it's like three hours feels like three minutes. And the only thing that we're focused on in that time is the thing that we're actually doing. Monday night, I went down to London and watched a band play. Now, I've got a lot on my mind at the minute with college and work and the book and my house and all kinds of things going on. But for this hour, that this band were on stage, it seemed to fly by in no time. And the only thing that I was thinking about was, man, these guys on stage are really good and the music they're playing makes me feel good. So I know that if I am trying to quit something and I need something to do in order to keep myself from going crazy thinking about this thing that I'm quitting, whether it's smoking or alcohol or excessive eating or anything else, then I need something that is that gives me the same experience that I get watching a band that you might get doing arts or going for a run or something like that. It needs to be not just a physical thing that we do 
to keep us away from the cigarettes, it needs to engage the mental and emotional side of us too. Like I mentioned earlier, going for a walk. If you're the kind of person that just hates going for a walk, then it's not going to be as rewarding for you as somebody who absolutely loves going for a walk. They love putting their boots on and their coat and going out in nature and <sighs> breathing in all that beautiful fresh air. That said, I do highly recommend exercise as one of the best things that you can do, like going for a run or just doing some kind of vigorous exercise. Because I've found that when I go for a run, I can't not, I can't be like running and, and thinking about something terrible at the same time. Apart from actually the terribleness of, oh my God, this is really hard work. <laughs> if I go to the gym, which I haven't done in so long because of all kinds of things that have happened to me. Um, if I go to the gym, I'm focused on, I've got to lift this weight, I've got to do this treadmill, I've got to do this thing, and I'm focused on the action itself so much that I don't have the mental capacity to at the same time think, man, I really like a cigarette right now. So exercise works really, really well, but it doesn't have to be exercise. You know, it can literally be any cooking, Arts, crafts, playing music, another, music for me is a, a really big one. Like either playing my guitar or I just put my headphones in and I just bounce around the place singing my head off. And, and I, I can't sing a song that makes me feel really happy whilst at the same time be really sad about not smoking. Or, or, or even be tense about not smoking. In fact, you know, the only thing that... The only thing going on for me at that moment is that song and time flies by. It isn't the case that, that I will, you know, pick up my guitar and look at the clock and it's 10 o'clock and then I play for like what seems like two hours and oh my god it's only like five past ten. It's more like I'll play for two minutes and two hours go by. So it's about finding that thing that engages us and that sparks some kind of passion and joy within us. Of course, there's one problem here. When you're now saying to me, Chris, I don't know what that thing is for me. I don't have that thing that, take, that consumes me and engages me and that lifts my soul up and makes me feel alive. I don't have that. Good, because what you do have now is an opportunity to find it. You have all these countless hours that you are no longer smoking. You have all this extra money that you are no longer wasting on cigarettes. You can go and experiment and you can go and try all the things. You can go and paint a picture, buy a camera, go for a run, play guitar go to a concert, go see a movie, you can find, you've can you got the, the, the freedom now to go and find this new thing. And half the time that in itself is a way better than distraction than just cleaning the car. I am so fully engaged in discovering what it is that I like. Because for so long the only thing I knew that I liked was smoking. And to be honest, I didn't even really like that all that much. But now I have all this freedom. I can go and experiment and try new things. And I can finally start living my life. And I can create for myself the kind of life that I don't have to distract myself from. Because nicotine cravings will disappear naturally if we let go of them and just let... Just let them come and let them go. If you are struggling with a craving, I recommend the visualization exercise that I posted a few weeks ago called the purge, where you don't distract yourself from the craving, you just reframe it so that it becomes a positive experience of cleansing and purging. There's also a free MP3 download of that that you can get from chrisscoils.com downloads. I hope 
this has made some kind of sense to you in some way and I do hope that it has been helpful. The basic gist is that if you are trying to keep busy to avoid smoking and it isn't working, then stop keeping busy and start finding something that really engages you and inspires you and brings your soul alive and consumes you to the point that hours pass and feel like minutes. If you are doing the thing where you are just keeping your hands busy or physically keeping yourself away from a cigarette, you might as well just go and lock yourself in a cage with the cigarettes at arm's reach, like just out of arm's reach. Instead, break out of the cage and find that thing, that one thing, or that many things that you absolutely love to do, and create a life that you do not need to distract yourself from. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you as well to all of you who have already bought the new ebook called Quit Smoking and Be Happy. We almost made it for a full video without a sales pitch. The book is available now in ebook format from Amazon and Google Play. You, uh, you can get the appropriate links from chrisscoyles.com slash book. And yes, I am working on the print paperback version, which I'm hoping to have ready before Christmas. As well, if you would like um, more support for your quit smoking journey, please do come and join us in Finding Freedom. It is a wonderful Facebook community with people who are at all different stages of their journey, who are loving and kind and support one another through this journey. It really is a, a very awesome community that I'm proud to be a part of. You can find us at facebook.com slash groups slash Finding Freedom 1. Let me know how you are getting on on your journey. Please know that I am rooting for you the whole way and wishing you every success. Thank you so much again for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.